Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here and I'm bringing you my review of The Creator, which I just saw this evening, October 7th with my buddy Brandon. Um, I had wanted to see this for a little bit. Once I knew that Gareth Edwards was involved and saw the trailers, it kind of piqued my interest. And really that's, you know, anything that's original science fiction, I feel like I have to support it. I've got to see it because it feels like, you know, as a fan of sci-fi, I frequently see a lot of sequels and prequels to big franchises, that kind of stuff. But I feel like it's increasingly rare to get uh, an original science fiction story that's genuinely interesting and makes me really want to go and check it out and see that. And so I went to see this movie with pretty much no expectations other than I had seen a Rotten Tomatoes, the score that I had there, which really, in my mind, is no bearing on whether or not it's going to be good. I increasingly find myself disagreeing with Rotten Tomatoes and a lot of critics in general. And actually, in a lot of cases, the audience score, I think, is more representative of where I lean. But anyway, let me tell you a little bit about this film. Hey, do me a favor. If you're enjoying the content here, please be sure to click the like button. Please be sure to subscribe. And as always, I very much appreciate your viewership. So this is a story about artificial intelligence. And in that way, it's extraordinarily timely, right? I've mentioned on this channel before, but I am a teacher and I am frequently contending with a lot of things related to AI. Or, you know, that term is kind of being used loosely these days, I think, because what we contend with and deal with right now isn't true artificial intelligence, but it's Programs that are very uh, convincingly and cleverly mimicking uh, things that we think are original in terms of their content. And I guess in some ways they are in the way that they're being stitched together from other external sources. But anyway, this is talking about AI and it's got a lot to say about it. Um, basically, the year is 2062, 2060 something, uh, somewhere in that range. And I will say this always kills me with movies because I'm like, if you're going to have super futuristic stuff happening, you know, maybe set it in 2260 something or whatever the case may be, because there's a lot of stuff in this film that... I'm reasonably sure in 35 years or so, we're probably not going to have quite yet. But anyway, so it's set in the future and humanity has become very reliant on artificial intelligence. But then at some point, there is a nuclear strike on Los Angeles purportedly by artificial intelligence. And this has caused the Western world to really kind of shun anything AI related. It's all humans. But then in other parts of the world, specifically in Asia, in this film, AI is still very prevalent and very much part of society. And so... Uh, there is a central character here who uh, has some stakes involved with this in terms of his family. He's sort of ex-military. He gets pulled into this uh, task of tracking down this weapon, this secret weapon, the super weapon that is supposedly being built by AI. He goes to track it down. He finds it, and it's a child. And from there, the story kind of unfolds in terms of sort of the philosophical and ethical things that he has to navigate and what I'll say is this, I think this movie works on a lot of different levels, but I think primarily it works as kind of an interesting think piece, right? I think there's a lot of really great ideas here, a lot of kind of moral quandaries, a lot of philosophical things to try and mull over and think through, especially for us now, right? We're on the precipice potentially of transitioning from something that seems like AI, maybe eventually that is actually AI. You know, who knows when that's actually going to happen or if it's already happened and we don't already know it yet, maybe potentially. Um, but I think, you know, any good piece of science fiction is trying to tell us something about or trying to warn us about something that we might have to contend with and to think really long and hard about what we want that to look like. And so that's what this movie is doing. And I think on that level, it really succeeds. From a visuals point of view, it's a really pretty movie. It looks very nice. It feels like a very fleshed out world. It feels like a real world. Again, I wouldn't say that it's believable that in 30 to 40 years, this is the world we're going to inhabit. But at some point in the distant future, this feels relatively believable. People are still terrible, <laughs> as they always have been and probably always will be. And so that's a big part of what we see in this movie. But I think the technology is convincing. It looks detailed. It looks real. The CGI, I think, always looks amazing. There was never any point in this movie where I was like, oh, that looks kind of shoddy. Everything looks super great. I would say the story overall, though, while it's totally fine and serviceable, it's not really all that original. You know, I, I, I'm watching it, and all I can think about as I'm watching it are better movies that tackle the same uh, subject matter, but in different pieces, right? I mean, so if you think about it in that way, this movie is kind of stitched together from a lot of really sort of classic movies. I think of Terminator 2. There's actually even some Aliens stuff in here. There's a good bit of James Cameron kind of sprinkled throughout this. There's some Blade Runner. I mean, there's really a lot of different things sort of happening here about, you know, what does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be alive? You know, how do we sort of uh, wrestle with those things? What kind of answers can we land on? Are there right answers? Are there wrong answers? It's a movie that deals with a lot of that. And I, and I think it comes down to sort of this big question of what does it mean to be alive, right? And, you know, what does it mean to love something inanimate? Like, what does that mean? Because that's one of the kind of central questions that sort of continually bubbles up in this film. So I think from sort of a, a subtext thematic point of view, that works. But again, from a storytelling point of view, it all 
you know, works, but there's nothing here especially memorable. Like, this is not the kind of movie that I'm going to rush out and buy on 4K Blu-ray. Like, I enjoyed it. I, I like seeing it in the theater. If it's on, you know, some kind of streaming service and I need something on in the background, I might revisit it at some point. But it's not one of those ones like Blade Runner 20, 2049 where I saw it and I was like, I immediately wanted to get back into the theater and rewatch it right away because I was just blown away by the experience. This is not quite that. However, it is very ably directed. It's very ably stitched together, put together, assembled. Um, and in that way, I appreciate what it's doing as a relatively original piece of science fiction. It is an original story. It's just drawing from a lot of other things that we've seen before in the past. So anyway, those are my thoughts on The Creator. If you've seen it, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, thanks so much for watching.